Welcome to Planet Earth, our loving home, and today's episode entitled Vegan, The Fastest Way to a Cooler Planet, Part 1. During the next few shows, it will be our pleasure to introduce you to current information on greenhouse gas emissions, solutions for a rapid planetary cooling, and why a plant-based diet is the quickest and most inexpensive way to reduce emissions and stabilize the Earth's temperature. Scientific research has shown that climate change is occurring more quickly than the worst case scenarios put forward by the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC, just a few years ago. Thus, many scientists and politicians realize it is imperative that we reduce the planet's temperature as expeditiously as possible. In the past, Efforts to mitigate global warming have focused almost exclusively on lowering carbon dioxide emissions. But we know now that although reducing CO2 is critical, even if the entire world switched to a zero carbon economy and lifestyle today, it would take thousands of years for this gas to dissipate. Some scientists and politicians are realizing that limiting shorter-lived greenhouse gases such as methane and ozone and other contributors to warming such as black carbon, also known as soot, released into the air from burning biomass and fossil fuels are where major gains in slowing the heating of the earth can be made in a swift amount of time. As one climate scientist says, we need to reduce short-lived greenhouse gases today in order to ensure a livable planet for our children. And we need to reduce CO2 to ensure a livable planet for generations a few hundred years from now. Limiting these gases, particularly methane, is relatively inexpensive and rapid, whereas many of the technologies to reduce CO2 are either in their infancy or are costly and time-consuming to integrate into the current infrastructure. Scientific understanding of the role of livestock in accelerating global warming has increased as well. Some researchers are beginning to recognize that livestock contributes much more to global greenhouse gas emissions than the 18% estimated by the United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization 2006 report, Livestock's Long Shadow. This report states that livestock raising is the number one source of human-caused methane. Methane, in turn, contributes to the creation of ozone. As livestock production and cultivating feed for these animals are both responsible for over 70% of rainforest destruction in the Brazilian Amazon, shifting to a plant-based diet can reduce black carbon particles landing on the ice such as Antarctica or the Andean glaciers by ending the forest burning done to clear space for farming and cattle grazing. We will begin by hearing what some of the world's top climate scientists and those in other scientific fields have to say about the urgency of quick action to halt climate change and then learn current information about the role of short-term greenhouse gases in lowering the Earth's temperature. It's hard for people to realize this because you don't notice much happening. Global warming is about one degree Celsius. Wit and weather variations are much larger than that from one day to another. So you don't notice that there's a crisis, but in fact, we are at a crisis point now because we are very close to passing tipping points in the climate system that would have very undesirable consequences. In fact, we've actually passed one tipping point, and that's the Arctic Ocean. We've already reached a point where we're going to lose all of the ice in the Arctic Ocean. We're already seeing record temperatures around the world. And with it, we're seeing species going extinct. We're seeing sea levels rise and coastal flooding. We're seeing spreading diseases. And we're seeing more extreme weather. What we're seeing now is just the beginning of what's predicted if we let things get worse. The IPCC, the UN climate panel, got it right. I mean, basically, 
operating on data that is now four or five years old, they made predictions about what the Earth system, what the climate system would look like in the future. Now we have something like four or five years more data, and it turns out that we're on their worst case trajectory or the worst case scenario that they defined, or maybe even worse. While we knew uh, a lot of things were changing, we've, we've come to realize that they're actually changing much faster than we thought before. So we have much less time to actually act.